peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Thursday, June 8th. And um, for Psalm Day this week, we've got Psalm 119, verses 65 to 72. And if you're familiar with, with Psalm 119, you know that it is um, it's the long, longest uh, chapter in the Bible, and it is an acrostic poem, right? It's uh, every, every word in um, each section. It's divided uh, into two sections. Each section connects to a letter in the Hebrew alphabet and, and the letter that of the Hebrew alphabet that it coordinates with each each word in that um, in that verse or excuse me each uh, each verse in that section the first word in that verse starts with the le that letter of the alphabet so um, yeah just kind of an interesting thing with that so Psalm 18 and also uh, Pretty much every verse connects to something to the Word of God, or, or his his law, or his judgments, or however however it's phrased in those. So, we'll uh, read chapter uh, to Psalm 119, beginning at verse 65, and the section on the the Hebrew letter Tet, and we'll go 65 to 72. We'll follow page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a, a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, Psalm 119, verse 65. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have dwelt, dealt well with us uh, according to your word. It's uh, undeserved, but uh, but we give you thanks for it. We give you thanks for your son Jesus and um, the, the teaching of good judgment and knowledge that you have given him and the trust in your commandments. Um, how we give you thanks for his, his steadfastness in keeping your word. And um, we pray that you would bless us also in that faithfulness, that you would teach us your statutes, and uh, that we would know in all things that you are good and you do good. Um, as we experience the, the attacks of the world, just as your son did, we pray that uh, we would, with our whole hearts, keep your precepts, um, that we would delight in your law, uh, and, and know that even our affliction is good for, you, good for us, that we might learn your statutes. Lord, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Bless us to always live according to that knowledge. Through your son Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, um, yeah, so this, this uh, section, obviously, every, every verse, you could hear, hopefully, something that related to, to the Word. Uh, you have dealt well with your servant according to your Word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. I was afflicted, and I went astray, but now I keep your Word. Uh, teach me your statutes, but with my whole, uh, my whole heart I keep your precepts. I, I delight in your law. Um, it was good that I was afflicted. I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. You know, if you if you really want some good um, good insight into how we should view God's God's word, this is this is a great psalm for that. And in particular, I think when when I when I come across these verses, you know, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. You know, I brought this up before, but. If somebody said, you know, I, I'll give you a million dollars to to give me your Bible, um, you know, on the one hand, that's a hard intellectual exercise for us to say, sure, you give me a million dollars, I'll get your million dollars, and I'll go buy a new Bible, no problem. I can buy, you know, a hundred new Bibles and still have it be no problem, right? So, so um, that that's kind of a, a a hard intellectual exercise, but its point should be taken. That, uh, that we should value the Word of God over and above gold and silver pieces, right? Over and above that which the world has to offer. Because the reality is that, um, that heaven and earth shall pass away. All of our, our gold and our silver shall, silver shall, shall, shall be gone. But um, as Jesus says, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. 
and, and that, that word is the word that, um, that shows us God's wisdom. It, it reveals God to us. As, as we look at that, that verse 72 there, it uh, talks about the law, and, and that, um, that word for law is Torah in, in Hebrew. And we've got that, let's see, let's see which verses we've got that in. I, I, I don't think, um, yes, uh, the um, 65 is Devar, or uh, Debar. Um, yeah, 66 is not going to be, that's not going to be Torah. But, uh, but we've got, we've got a couple of verses, you know, where it says, um, in 70, your law, uh, you know, pr pretty much I would assume whenever it's translated your law, that, that you, that's Torah there. And, um, and, and that should be understood not, not in terms of commandments alone, per se, as we have it here, but Torah should be understood as, as that revelation of God. And, and as we look at all this, yeah, you dwelt, dwelt, dealt well with your servant according to your word. How is that word revealed? That Torah, it's that, that, that revelation of God by which we know him. And uh, teach me good judgments and, uh, and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. The revelation of those commandments is good, is from that, that revelation of God and, and who he is. Uh, and, and the desire to do good, to, te to, to learn his statutes, uh, to keep his precepts, and um, to delight in that law, and to delight. And, and, and as we hear that, you know, this can sound kind of law-oriented in, in view of commands and that sort of thing. Um, and, and that's where it's good for us to remember that the commands that God gives us are, 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 are commands that are derived from his nature as good and loving. And, and they reflect him. Uh, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So, so we have the revelation of God's love to us in Jesus, uh, we, the revelation that shows us that even though we have not loved God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, nor loved our neighbor as ourself, that, that, uh, that Christ has died for that sin and redeemed us and made us anew. And so um, the Torah of God reveals that love to us. The cross reveals that, and, and, and the Torah uh, inscripturates that, that, that cross, right? It puts that, puts that word and that act of Jesus into writing. Now, as I say that, I'm using that very broadly. I'm not talking about what's often called the Torah of the first five books of the Bible, but I'm talking about the, the whole revelation, revelation of Scripture. And, and, and as we see this then, um, you know, to connect it to the gospel lesson, uh, learn what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Um, this, this, this Torah, this revelation of God, which teaches us His goodness, which teaches us the, the goodness of Christ, and, and the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation that we have and that we have in His love and then that strikes us and, and gives us new life that we would, that we would walk according to that and, and um, see, the, see the good that comes to us in our afflictions, learning of the, of the Torah, learning of, of and then think about how often affliction is what drives us to, to that word and drives us to the recognition of that need and yet God works good in this and He is the good and loving God who, who, who sacrifices ultimately for our sins and, and brings us perfection and, 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 um, and eternity, uh, eternal life in Him uh, through that word. Thanks be to God. All right, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.